Hello everyone, I'm Mary Rose Corrigan, Public Health Specialist for the City of Dubuque with the January 14th, 2021 update from the Dubuque County Public Health Incident Management Team. Dubuque County's COVID-19 case total is over 11,000 cases with 553 cases reported in the last 14 days. All age groups are experiencing new cases with the 18 and under age group accounted for 15% of the cases since January 1st and the 19 to 24 year olds accounting for 12%. The good news is that the elderly are having fewer cases with 9% in the 70 year old age group and up since January 1st. Meanwhile, cases continue to surge in many parts of the country with over 1,700,000 cases and over 23,000 deaths reported in the last seven days. I know we are most focused on what's happening here in the U.S., but remember, this is a pandemic, meaning worldwide. The World Health Organization reports all regions are experiencing increased COVID-19 activity except for Southeast Asia. Last week, cases were up more than 30% in the Western Pacific, Africa, and America regions. The five countries reporting the most cases were the United States, the United Kingdom, Brazil, Russia, and Germany. And 50 countries have now reported cases with the B117 variant, and 20 countries have reported the more transmissible 501Y.V2 variant, yet another COVID-19 variant first reported in South Africa. The World Health Organization also noted two additional variants reported. I don't mean to sound the alarm bell, but scientists are noting these variants seem to be more easily spread and these variants are one of the reasons CDC issued a new order effective January 26, 2021. It requires all passengers arriving to the U.S. from a foreign country to get tested for COVID-19 infection no more than three days before their flight departs and to provide proof of the negative result or documentation of having recovered from COVID-19 to the airline before boarding the flight. Dubuque County continues to receive vaccine from the Iowa Department of Public Health and is making great progress on vaccinating the healthcare workers in Iowa Priority Group 1A. The Iowa vaccine shortage order requires us to only vaccinate healthcare workers. And the Iowa Disease Advisory Council and the Iowa Department of Public Health decides who are in the priority groups. Now, because we get limited amounts of vaccine sent to us here in Dubuque County, the incident management team is allocating our vaccine to healthcare providers in the county based on risk of exposure to COVID-19 and a list of other factors. We are on track to finish our healthcare workers in the next two weeks and are making plans for the next priority group 1B. So your next question is, who's in the priority group 1B? Well, 1B is all Iowans who are age 75 years and older, pre-K through 12 grade school staff, early childhood education and child care workers, law enforcement and first responders, individuals and staff in congregate or group living situations, correctional facility inmates and staff, people with disabilities who are dependent on someone else taking care of them, and anyone in an outbreak cluster as determined by the incident management team. That's a lot of people to get vaccinated and we will still be under a vaccine shortage order that only allows vaccination of people named in this next 1B priority group. I know you may think your particular age, job or health condition is a higher priority, but with limited vaccine, we can't offer it to everyone and prioritizing is not easy. When prioritizing for COVID-19 vaccination, this is what we think about. We wanna keep people needing hospital and clinic care to a minimum, so our healthcare system is not overwhelmed. We wanna lower the incidence of death and serious disease. We wanna keep society and our communities functioning as much as possible. We wanna protect those who are most vulnerable to the vaccine and to do this with all limited and unpredictable amounts of vaccine.
So we look at the people that fall into these categories and that's how the priorities are chosen. We're working closely with our pharmacists, clinics, and hospitals to plan for vaccinating these groups. However, we are not yet scheduling anyone or taking names for waiting lists. So please do not call your doctor's office or clinic or the health department or VNA because we are not ready to move to phase 1B and even if we were, we don't have that authority to do that yet. I appreciate your patience and understanding and mostly we appreciate everyone continuing to wear masks, maintain distance from others and staying home when you're sick. And you can tell many are doing this along with washing our hands more because our incidence of other communicable diseases in it is lower than normal. So Monday we celebrate Martin Luther King Day and unfortunately many celebrations like the Martin Luther King breakfast and other community gatherings are not happening this year. But like we've learned to do with other holidays, you can still celebrate and recognize this day in a safe way. So plan an outdoor activity with people who live with you, such as an outdoor walk or outdoor conversation with the neighbors. Attend the virtual Martin Luther King breakfast. Plan a celebration for the people you live with or reach out virtually to family, friends, and neighbors by phone or sending a card or note. Watch a live, live stream celebration from your home. Pick up or make a special meal from a local restaurant to share with your household or drop off to a neighbor and read or watch some history relevant to Martin Luther King. As we close today, keep in mind our ever-changing COVID-19 situation. Keep practicing those proper public health measures and avoid swapping air with those outside your household. Be patient, celebrate or take time to think about Martin Luther King Jr. and stay strong because we're all in this together.